Hello everyone, my name is Julie Demi. I'm a Cambridge Certified English teacher and a teacher trainer. In these sessions, I share with you some useful tips and tricks how to prepare for different exams and how to become better teachers and educators. So in this session, I would like to talk about our memory and why we forget things that we've just learned. We are going to talk about how to overcome a forgetting curve and I will share with you the approach that will help you retrieve information easier. So let's get started. Probably you have noticed that you tend to forget the things that you have just learned or those things that you used to be good at. Why does it happen, you might ask? Well, the answer is simple. We deal with the forgetting curve. I'm pretty sure that you can remember yourself in such situations when you had your exam. You learned everything before and then another day you came to the exam, passed it successfully and after a month you can barely remember any information that you've learned. Why does it happen? If you don't have further exposure to this material, it means that your brain starts forgetting it. Let's try to answer the question, why do we forget things? And why do we forget the things that we've just learned so quickly? Well, the answer is simple. We deal with the forgetting curve. Over 100 years ago, one German psychologist Hermann Ebbinghaus conducted a memory research where he experimented with different students how they memorize information and what happens to the memory. Let's figure out what his findings were. First of all, we forget over 40% of information that we've learned after the first 20 minutes of our exposure to the information. Then another 14% of information that we received vanishes from our memory and so on and so forth. So we have kind of the curve. When we deal with the forgetting curve, frequency is one of the most important factors and here I will tell you why. Interestingly enough, our brain is an energy-saving device, which means it doesn't store some information that we don't use. And it means that we forget this information because we don't use it. It happens with our exam preparation, it happens with different information that we read. This is just the feature of our memory. We can see that we deal with decluttering. Decluttering of our memories from our brain. And our brain helps us. On the one hand, it helps us, but on the other hand, we can see that we need some information, we need to store some information, which leads us to a very logical conclusion that if we want to memorize something, if we want to store it in our memory for a longer period of time, first of all, we need to care about the frequency. And second of all, we need to think about the exposure to this information in the future so that we can remain our knowledge fresh and updated. What does the forgetting curve show? In fact, it shows how information is lost if there is no attempt to retain it later. And if there is no or minor exposure to this information, it means that the chances that we forget this information are relatively higher. Generally, people forget about 60% of information that they consume. But we can do something about that. And by saying so, I mean exposure. Imagine you have a lecture or a webinar and you need to listen to some piece of information and preferably you would like to memorize something. First of all, note-taking might be a good idea and you can come back to your notes a little bit later in order to review it. The first thing that I would like to admit is that if you have a chance to look through your notes straight after this session, it would definitely change the whole story. It would definitely change your outcomes and you will see that you will be able to memorize more. You will be able to store more information and then when you need to retrieve it, it will be easier for you to recall. Unfortunately, not all of us have chance to expose ourselves to this information straight after the lecture. Normally we do it uh, after a working day or probably another day. And when you expose yourself to this information, you can see that some data is forgotten and you can't remember some things. What I'm trying to say is that if you have a chance to expose yourself to this information straight after the workshop or lecture, 
that would be great. If you have a recording of the workshop, that would be even better because you will have a chance to listen to the same information one more time and you will have a chance to see how your brain can remember. You probably might uh, compare it with the songs. When you listen to the song that you really like over and over again, you can see that you can easily memorize the words and the lyrics is something what you can be quite good at and you can remember the lyrics even when you can't hear the music. Almost the same thing happens with the information that you want to learn. If you increase the frequency of exposure to this information, you will see that you will have a chance to remember this information for a longer period of time. It leads us to a logical question about the frequency. When should I review? What should I review? And how often should I review? Should I review it immediately? Yes, that's something what we have just noticed, right? But what to do then after? How soon should I come back to this information again? Imagine that you have your notes and you make your notes in a nice and correct way. And that's something what I'm going to talk about in my upcoming video, how to take the notes in a good way so that they can serve you well in the future. If you have your notes, ideally, you need to expose yourself to your notes at least four times. The first time straight after the lecture, within the first 10 minutes. Then it would be great if you could have a chance to do this within 24 hours, then another day, and then in one week and after in one month or sooner. If you make this experiment, you will notice that you can keep more information in your memory and you will be able to easily recall and retrieve it. Although a forgetting curve is a totally natural process, it can be disturbed by active recall. Active recall is the way you review information and you can see that we have the word active, which means you don't just look through your notes, but you actively answer the questions. Ideally, you need to make a list of questions related to the topic that you are learning. When you have your review time, try answering these questions. If you can answer, highlight it one color. But if you can't answer it, you can barely remember what it stands for. Then I would suggest highlighting it with a different color, which means you will know that you need to put it a little bit closer and you need to repeat this information. In my upcoming videos, I will share with you how to do it using Notion, how to review information easier, faster, and how to store it in one place. So Notion, that's something what I personally use for my work and education. According to the research, it's necessary to review information at least three times. Then you can see how less is forgotten after each review. You can see it in this graph and that's interesting how our exposure to the material matters, how the frequency of exposure affects our retention. All right, so I hope that this session was helpful for you. We are going to talk about note-taking and active recall in order to make the process of preparation for different exams or just in life. If you like this video, please subscribe to my channel and your thumbs up will be highly appreciated. I would be pleased to read all your comments and probably have your ideas how you personally prepare for the exam or try to keep your memory alert. And if you have any ideas, please share them in the comments down below. I wish you good luck and hopefully this video would help you to overcome the forgetting curve and you will not lose a lot of interesting and memorable facts that you would like to keep and store in your memory. Thank you for your attention. Bye!